August 2nd, 2022, meeting of the Littleton Conservation Commission. Uh, let's start out with the administrative matters, uh, the approval of meeting minutes. And I believe we have a draft from our July 19th, 22, 20, sorry, I don't know what year it is lately, 2022 uh, meeting uh, prepared by Tim. And they looked amazing. You did a fantastic job on them. Oh, thank you. So does anybody have any edits or uh, anything they'd like to add to the minutes of July 19th? Right. I will make a motion uh, that we approve the minutes from July 19th, 2022. Perfect. We have a second. I'll second. Perfect. All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Kyle. Oh, I think you're on mute, Kyle. Work. It didn't work. Uh, Kyle Maxwell, aye. Brian. Brian Crowley, aye. Michael. Michael Livingston, aye. Myself, aye. It's unanimous. Perfect. All right. So moving on to additional administrative matters. It looks like we've cleared out our LWD COB CR update. Uh, I-495 spill update is also postponed. Uh, so do we have any, any other updates or administrative uh, matters we'd like to bring up tonight? Um, just two things. Uh, one is, um, I don't know where I put the wording. The, um, the commission, if you so approve, needs to vote on accepting um, a small parcel on Riviera Drive. It was one of the last privately owned parcels in that area of Long Lake. And Mary Williams, who was the owner, has actually been trying for a while now to donate it to the town, but we finally got the deed cleared up. Um, so the commission needs to vote to accept the gift of land and then it goes to select board and then it's a done deal. Oh, perfect. Where is the parcel, Amy? I didn't catch the street name that you said. Uh, well, the street doesn't really exist. It's Riviera. Hang on a second, I can pull it up for one minute here. There are so many paper roads within Long Lake Park. It's crazy. <laughs> Is this piece right in here? Oh, okay. This is Colonial Drive. So it's, it's you know, the tower's over here. So it's kind of at the end of Colonial Drive. Got it. All right. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or uh, comments? On accepting the parcel. All right, hearing none, would anybody like to make a motion? Sure, make a motion that the Conservation Commission uh, approves receipt of lot, I guess the number of lot 26 off Riviera Drive. Right. right. Do we have a second? Second. All right, roll call vote. All those in favor, Kyle. Kyle Maxwell, aye. Brian. Brian Crowley, aye. Michael. Michael Livingston, aye. Myself, aye. It's unanimous. Perfect. So here comes the fun part. That needs to be signed in person. So I will um, I'll get it ready, and I'll set it out on our counter and let everybody know um, that they can come in and sign it. Uh, the select board needs to sign it too, so we do have a little time. Mm -hmm. But when you come in to sign it, you can see our new uh, office space on the basement of the library. Oh, are we fully moved over to the other side now? Yeah, ninety nine percent. There's still various stuff still up in the third floor, but it's basically all there, and computer hooked up, phones are hooked up. So, so um, what's what's the office now? I guess. So it's the basement of the old library, basically. Basement of the library. Okay. So that, that is the, uh, what are we, land use and building um, department. So it's building, board of health, conservation, planning, all down in there. As we were up in the third floor, but with a lot more space and, and a little bit of room to grow. Excellent. Easy access. I mean, you walk right into town hall and right off to the right now. It's that first base on the right. Okay. Yes. You, you can't though. Um, you got to come in through the library entrance at the Cooper room Oh. for security. Oh. Um, so it's, it's kind of awkward getting for the public 
to get from our offices, you basically have to go back out um, and upstairs again, which is a little awkward, but he'll yeah. figure it out. We'll take the new space in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, did we have any other administrative matters that anyone would like to bring forward? Would yeah, the other one, um, uh, we got um, notice that uh, Fort Palm was going to head with some more of the aquatic management. Um, I think tomorrow or Thursday, I forget the exact date of it. Um, and it, and it, this is for aldecides. And initially, um, I couldn't remember if they'd had actually, if you all had actually approved the out, use of the aldecides over there, um, or if it was just for the curly um, pond weed. But I went through both the nose and tent as well as the environmental monitor notice, and they both say both the um, aquatic plants, uh, algicides, and hydro raking were all approved in that order conditions. Um, so just to let you know, and I don't know if anybody here in the public had any comments on that or wanted more information. Now would be the time. <coughs> Does anyone in the public have any comments or questions? Hi, uh, this is Kristen Kazokas from Six Cottage Way. Hi there. Hi. Um, I am just wondering what exactly um, type of algicide will they be using? Um, did they say in their notice? Uh, they did say in, in the notice intent as well as the notice that I just got from them. What, okay, well, I think I didn't know what type of chemical they were actually going to be using. I don't have it in front of me. Okay. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Would anyone else uh, from the audience like to ask a question regarding this uh, particular matter before we move on? All right. Well, we do have a couple more minutes until our 745 uh, public hearing for, let's see, for the ANRAD for Newtown Hill. Um, were there any other administrative matters that we can fill time with? <laughs> I, I, I was trying to think something. I can give you a slideshow. Hey. <laughs> Michael, did you mention you wanted to talk about e-bikes? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I uh, did do some investigation on uh, kind of where things stand in uh, um, Massachusetts as far as what's been determined elsewhere, uh, and uh, just try to get some information about it. And um, it, it seems like uh, right now Massachusetts isn't really distinguishing e-bikes officially from uh, like mopeds or other motorized uh, vehicles that are are rather more powerful um uh there is legislation in place or or up right now to adopt the same classification that most other states are and um uh i did find that the dcr uh does have a lot of language about uh where e-bikes are allowed to uh go on uh, on those properties uh, and based on on the classes like other states had. I, I guess what it comes down to is uh, if uh, if we're going to allow them on the uh, the trails as noted, it, it seems like there has to be an awful lot more language as to when and where and how they'll be regulated and uh, informed. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm wondering, you know, what what else will I need to do to kind of firm that up? And uh, you know, it's uh, right now it's very vague. Like they they talk about um, multi-use trails, which uh, uh, either uh, may be paved or not. Uh, the way that the DCR states things, uh, no motorized vehicles are allowed on natural trails and are uh, restricted to uh, improved trails exclusively. So uh, leaving the multi-use trails ambiguous like that 
kind of leaves it open to run the e-bikes anyplace. So uh, I, I guess I wonder how far do we have to go to really uh, specify whether or not to do it to begin with, and if so, uh, under what conditions? Thanks for looking all that up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but what are my best next steps right now? Um, I think Kathy, are you are you there? Because uh, this came up mostly with uh, writing this ER that the uh, Littleton Conservation Trust is going to hold. Um, so. I don't know, Kathy, if you had, guys have had any more thought about it or if we just want to not necessarily approve the use of e-bikes on Williams right now, but leave it open. So if 10 years from now or something, um, they aren't shut out if we decide to move ahead. Yeah, we haven't had a whole lot of discussion yet about it. I, I did bring it up at our last meeting, which was in June, but at least in July and August. And General consensus was, as long as other motorized things aren't allowed, why should we let electric motors um, have? It's especially like you, Michael was just saying, if you know, they're not paved or anything else, you know, could they potentially do more damage than just say a regular mountain bike or something like that? And so there's more parameters on it. We were kind of, mostly people kind of gave it a thumbs down, but I think if it was more structured, you know, it might change the conversation. Well, let me, I can circle back with SVT. Um, Cause I think this came up a little bit with Brown's woods, um, but that's a potential short trail. Anyway, it's not a big deal. Or I can call um, down to EEA and see if they've been running across this and have any language that they could recommend. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It, it, would it make sense? I mean, I don't know how in depth we want to get into with e-bikes and specific types of motorized vehicles in CRs. Cause I know that regardless of whatever we put in the language for the CR, the property itself has motorized vehicles banned from the property as a part of our regular regulations for municipal conservation land. So I'm wondering if including language about the e-bikes might kind of uh, go against what we have for regulations for the property. So maybe just leaving it out for now. And... Well, the, the document talks about, you know, a variety of motorized vehicles that are allowed and uh, the e-bikes have been you know, uh, pulled in along with that. So it, maybe it's a bigger issue to address, uh, like you're saying, Andrew. I guess we'll do a little more investigating and... Yeah, I, th I think changing the policy for open space in general is kind of one thing we could do, you guys could do any time. Um, but allowing a toehold in a CR might be worth at least thinking about because it's going to be real hard to change the CR later. Um, mm -hmm. Especially if eventually it sounds like, you know, Massachusetts could change their definition of, of motors, motorized vehicles as it sounds like maybe other states have done. So um, I don't know in a situation like that, what happens? Let me, I'll, I'll poke around a little bit more with, with SVT and the state and, and see if, They've got some good language, and then I can run it by Kathy. And we'll go from there. Because at least with the Hager Homestead, they're saying no bikes at all, so that makes it easier in that CR. All right, perfect. Uh, did anyone else want to add anything to that, or? All right, well, it is 745, so why don't we jump into our public hearing, abbreviated notice of resource any, uh, area delineation, Newtown Hill Terrace, Mass DEP file number 204-9 blank, parcel, parcel number U31-69, 70, 71, and 72. 
Is, is there anyone here to speak to this uh, particular? Yeah. Topic? Hey, um, uh, Matt Stangle uh, from Landtech Consultants representing the applicant Hemingway Ventures LLC. Uh, if you just bear with me a moment, I just want to pull up the plan. Okay, it should be, the plan should be opening up. All right, uh, just curious, can you, is the plan being shown? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I, I just haven't done that on my iPad before, wanted to make sure it worked. Um, so I just wanted to start with a little background on the lot. Um, the, uh, the, the overall property that is uh, encompassed by all the parcels that were listed uh, was originally a 16-acre uh, lot at 555 Newtown uh, Road. Uh, it's located on the eastern side of Newtown Hill uh, at the intersection of Newtown Road and Tadawan Road. Um, in 2008, that 16 acre parcel was subdivided into the, the lots that are shown on this plan. There are four buildable lots and a large open space parcel at the north end of the property. Um, the lots after they were subdivided, they were never developed. Um, and along with that, uh, with the subdivision that was permitted, there was a order of resource area delineation that was issued by the Conservation Commission in September 2004. It was for the same wetland area that is shown on this plan. Um, the, the lot itself is, um, it's the, well, the four lots still contain the original house that was there before they were subdivided. Uh, the topography slopes, it has generally steep slopes from the top of Newtown Hill down to uh, Newtown Road and Hadawan Road. And um, for this ANRAD application, we had wetland scientists from Norse Environmental uh, go out and flag the wetland area on the property to update that, that uh, the wetland line. And then my office uh, had our surveyors field locate them um, in July of uh, this summer. Uh, the wetland itself, which you can see in blue on the plan, it, it is generally consistent with the, with the wetland uh, area that was shown on the plans uh, that were approved for the ORAD back in 2004. Um, from what the wetland scientists uh, told, told us, it's, it's, uh, the wetland is mostly just from groundwater that weeps out the side of the hill and I'm not, we didn't, we didn't try and go too far down onto the abutting properties, but from what I understand from reading a letter from a, a peer review that for the original application in 2004, there is a swale that picks up some of this water when it, um, when it's, uh, can't remember exactly what it said, maybe in the spring when there's like the most water that comes off the side of that hill. But uh, there's no other resource areas that are on the properties. Uh, there's no floodplain, no natural heritage or ACEC areas. Um, there's no certified ver vernal pools on the property, uh, no streams or rivers. Um, I know when we had uh, submitted the application, Amy, I think Amy was out of the office for a while and she said that we wouldn't have an opportunity to schedule a site walk before the before this hearing tonight, um, and that we would likely try and schedule one for um, before uh, before another meeting. Uh, but if anybody has any questions or um, any comments or anything, uh, Matt, when did you say this was flagged? I'm sorry if I missed it. Oh, the uh, the wetlands were flagged in June of. Uh, 2022, so uh, earlier this summer. Okay. And you said that was done by Norse Environmental? Yes, Norse. Okay. All right, would the uh, commission be interested in going out on a site walk uh, to verify the, the wetland line? I think that makes sense, Andrew. Yeah. I, I have not been on the property. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see. Do you guys want to set one up now or set one up offline? Do you want to get uh, this it, setting it up now? Uh, yeah. Um, I. Uh, uh, what's your avail? What's what is your availability? When's it going to be under ninety degrees? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might not want to wait for that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would uh, do you have, if do you have any available? Availability next week. Um, I I won't be in the office next week, but another engineer uh, from Land Tech, Matt Waterman, will be um, should be available. And will someone from Norse be there? Uh, we could certainly try and get somebody out there with us. We would we would absolutely try and have one of uh, one of their wetland scientists be there. Well, that might make the most sense if we want to check any soils. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. What's uh, what works for people midday after work? Midday is usually best for me. Something around around lunchtime. Yeah, same for me. Lunchtime. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to pull up my calendar here, but I'm not having much luck. Middays I typically can't do, but. Uh, Brian and Michael, if you could get out there, that would be fantastic. Uh, do you want to pick out a day now, just in case other commission members want to tag along? And I, can set up a, I can set up a second thing if people want to see it in the evening. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Next week, Monday, I think, is the only day uh, that would work for me, um, if that works for, for the rest of the group. I can get I can get in touch with uh, with Norse tomorrow morning and and see if uh, see if either Steve or Maureen can get out there uh, for a site walk around noon on Monday um, and then I can let Amy know if there's uh, if there's any conflicts with that. Sounds good. Perfect. Sounds and can good. you also ask them to send over the um, the data forms they did? Yes, I can do that. Uh, Yes, I, I know those were admitted uh, omitted from the from the application that we that we sent in. I think there were some uh, some COVID issues at Norse, but I don't want to speak out of uh, out of pocket on that. So I think there was there were some they were short staffed before we submitted this. Yep. All right, perfect. So we'll have that tentative uh, or that actual site walk uh, Monday at noon uh, for those who can, who can attend. And then we'll work on getting uh, another one set up for uh, those who can't make it and would like to go check out the site. Yeah, Amy, I'm away on vacation next week, but um, when we get back, if there's a possibility, I definitely want to, I would love to see this site before it goes forward. Well, maybe we can try for Monday the 15th at like 5 or 5.30. Sure. That'd be good. Yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be great. Monday the 15th at 5.30. Amy, that would actually be even better than next week for me. So I'm, I'm fine waiting until the 15th if, uh, if there's going to be another group going on the 15th. I, I can do that as well. That, that okay. sounds good. Okay. It'll probably give uh, Matthew some more time to get Norse involved as well. That sounds good to me. Monday the 15th at... Monday's the... Yeah. At 5.30, shall we say? <laughs> yep. Excellent. All right, perfect. All right, sounds and, good. And I'm sorry, one more thing, Matthew. Can we yes. park up the driveway or should we park down at the bottom? I I have never driven up into the site, but I looking at Street View, it looks a little overgrown. I think I, but I do think our surveyors may have driven up that that uh, gravel drive. So I don't have a definitive answer for you. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try to. I'll try to take a look at it. Okay. 
Um, and Andrew, I'm not sure if there's any of others here who might have a, may or may not have a comment or question. Um, is there anybody in the audience that would like to ask a question or provide a comment to the board? Okay, I don't see any hands raised. All right. All right, so I do believe that we've got a site walk set up for Monday the 15th and we'll uh, we'll go from there. We'll see you at our next meeting on, let's see. The 16th. August 16th. All right, thank you very much. No problem, have a great night. Thanks, you too. Okay, so uh, let's see what we have next here. So our next matter scheduled for 8 p.m., uh, the public hearing for 11 Lincoln Drive has actually been continued for those of you that uh, joined us a little later on in the meeting. Uh, and actually our next hearing isn't until 8.15 uh, for 25 Juniper Road. So we do have a little bit of a gap in between here to, uh, to begin the next uh, hearing. So I don't know, do you guys wanna do like a short recess? Is that something that We could see we've got a lot of dead air to fill. There's a lot of dead air, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you think like a short recess for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and? I, I sounds, think that might sounds be. good. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so we'll see each other back here at, want to say like 8, 10? Sure. And we'll, perfect, all right. All right, see you then.
I think this was the first time ever that we've ever taken a recess from a conservation commission meeting. I I know it. <laughs> you got to run these things more often, Andrew. I know, right? Hey, they're efficient. There's breaks. <laughs> What's not to like? Hmm. All right, so we'll give everybody a couple more minutes. We do still have four minutes before we can uh, start the public hearing for uh, 25 Juniper. I can mention that uh, nine air sold. Um, I'm not sure to who. So eventually we may see somebody else come in on that. Maybe did just... you? So <laughs> I went to the select board meeting last week and they were there i guess they got their bond released and everything all that i don't know if anybody's gone by it apparently they re rehydro seeded and put in a boatload of plantings along the top of the slope um arbor Vitae, i believe they said but it was something like 90 that i thought it was the number they <laughs> wow that's pretty yeah. intense and i might have misheard that but it was it it made me do a double take, whatever. Yes. Yeah. So. They had contacted me just to ask what the new owner had to do. And I basically said to fill out that form that they're aware of the order conditions and should come in and have a chat, especially if they're going to make any changes to what was originally approved. Because Kyle's plan was never approved. Kyle Mann's. Okay, three more minutes and we can start the next hearing. Oh, <clears throat> and if anybody heard about it, they um, select board approved negotiating a lease with, I forget the name of the cider company now, but with a the cider company will be taking over Nagog, apparently. Oh, excellent. So Good. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Kyle, do you have the, the name of the uh, the orchard? I mean, the, the company? I have. I don't remember. Uh, I'll give you two seconds. I have it here somewhere. Storm Along. Storm Along Cider. I never heard of them. They're out of Shelburne, I think it was. Interesting. Do you know oh, Sherburn, sure sorry. Sherburn. Sure oh, Sherburn. Sure hmm. Interesting. Do you know when the, the new lease will be taking effect or is that still uh no, they're they're still they're gonna be going through a negotiation round of certain things. There's some concerns of the structures that are on the property that the town owns technically, so that are in not great shape that need a lot of maintenance and upkeep. Um so there's some concern that giving them the lease and then they do the work on the prop on the, the structures is some sort of public land updating or something basically we can't we can't expect our lessees to update and maintain the structures and then when they're done walk away and be like hey we have new new updated structures so i guess there's some some back and forth that needs to be hashed out regarding just that. Um, and then there's, we'll probably hear from them because there's going to be, you know, there's deer fencing concerns and ideas um, in certain areas. So, so I know it's not, I wouldn't expect it to be happening imminently <laughs> that they'll be walking in. And for what it's worth, I think APR does have grants for things like farm buildings, but there was definitely grant discussions. Um, that I heard mentioned in one of the meetings that I sat in. So, or from council, like from town council, I think mentioned, yeah. mentioned that. I imagine they're probably pretty competitive. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll, uh, we'll await the, uh, the language yeah. of the lease and see where it goes. 
All right, we are at 8.15, so let's go ahead and open our continued public hearing. Notice of intent for 25 Juniper Road, Mass DEP file number 204-964, the after the fact permit for retaining wall, brick patio, and lawn grading. Is there anyone here tonight to speak to this matter? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Nick Pollan from Goldsmith Press and Ringwall. Want me to roll right into it or? That'd be great, sure. Sure, so uh, nice seeing everyone again. Um, so we've submitted some some uh, updated materials that we narratively went over on the last commission meeting. If you don't mind, I'll share my screen. Certainly. Thank you. Um, so revised plan um, that we provided uh, really dealt with the effort of reviewing some of the some of the pictures that we went over at the last hearing. Um, through those pictures, we were able to revise the plan to approximate the limits of the um, former wooden deck concrete slab areas, as well as the um, landscape bed on the western and eastern limit. Um, after approximating those, we were able to kind of verify the quantifications of those areas compared to the proposed current uh, paper patio. So uh, just run through those again real quickly. Um, what we found looking at the photos, which running through some of them, again, this is the aerial. This here is 25 Juniper. You can see the old wooden deck, the outline now that you know what it is of a landscape area as well as a landscape area on the other side obscured by the shadow of the house. Uh, but most importantly, in this picture, you'll notice the limits of the property are fully, fully disturbed and grassed. Um, this photo here, um, we also now take an aerial photo. You can see landscape bed, concrete access steps, wooden deck, and um, other landscape area, as well as just the entire lawn blending into the property to the south. The wetlands are behind this large tree here. Uh, continuing down, this is a picture again while that wooden deck was being disturbed. You can see the wooden timber wall approximating the property line, um, the 22 woodland property, and again, the limit of grass as they blended together. Um, this is the existing knotweed looking into. This is the wetland and the flowing channel at the far end of the stream. This is the area that will be that's within wetlands that will be restored as part of the 22. This is the knotweed as of a month ago. Um, you can really see how it exploded. Um, this was provided of an approximation of the old wooden deck. This is where the concrete steps were gonna be. And this hose is approximating the 50 foot uh, buffer zone. Again, this is helpful in the lower left of the picture, another area listing showing grass over to the northeast corner of the property. Again, wetlands are over to the left. Um, this one you can actually see, it looks more like bare soil. Um, again, this is from the front, northeast corner is in the back right here. Again, bare soil grass with the wetlands off in the distance. And then this is the current state of the property with the wetlands over here. You can see the mowed area, edge of the timber wall proposed to come out. And this is the area of fill to be removed. Um, jumping back to the plans, we're able to draft that in, come up with an approximate um, square footage of two square feet. Again, it's very minimal, about a 49-foot offset um, to the wetland area. Again, this whole property line here, along with this three, two and a half feet or from the property corner, is all mowed right now as in grass. Um, what this does is we're able to quantify um, that old, it's relatively minimal, just two square feet. Um, so we were able to quantify the change in impervious coverage from approximately 2,500 square feet or 2,570 um, to the current conditions of 2,989, which is just a 4.2% increase below your local threshold for 1,000 square feet or 5% increase of impervious on the lot to handle stormwater. Um, we are still proposing to handle stormwater. Uh, right below that calculation, we have the stormwater management 
Um, what we've done is take the most aggressive calculation as far as um, hydraulic soil group of natural infiltration hitting the pervious soils. Um, based on that, we were able to calculate an approximate existing condition and annual um, recharge rate of 363 cubic feet. Did the same for the proposed. You'll see that there's the efficiency that we have to overcome of 21 cubic feet per storm. Um, the chamber that we provide is actually 55 cubic feet. So uh, that works out to an inch over the contributing area of roof um, and more than double offset of the in perv the pervious area that's quote unquote lost by the impervious surface of the um, uh, patio. Going down to the proposed and down in the lower left-hand corner of the revised plans, we outline what we believe is the support for the granting of the waiver to allow the existing paver patio to be located within the 50 foot. Um, summarizing those very quickly, uh, you have a net increase of about 196 square feet from the 50 foot buffer to, uh, of the paver patio. That 196 square feet is offset by a proposed restoration area in the northeast corner of 896, almost a 4.6 or so um, per ratio, square foot to square foot. Um, what that also does is it restores a grandfathered disturbance of lawn area um, to a buffer zone where one does not exist. So um, the, the application actually provides for a creation of a buff buffer zone depth of minimum of 28 feet measured here. You can see that that's actually increased in some areas, um, especially to the southwest when that is paired with the restoration efforts that was just recently approved on the 22 Woodland site. Um, what you'll also notice is the recharge chamber that I uh, mentioned here. Um, that recharge chamber is connecting to two existing downspouts that currently dis discharge to the surface and then run through the uh, maintained lawn to the wetland area. Uh, that's kind of the second time I've given that spiel, but now we actually have pictures and words backing them up. Um, I can certainly get into more detail in any specific area, or I can answer any questions the commission has. Thank you for that. Uh, does the board have any questions or comments? Can you refresh my memory as to the invasives removal that has taken place or that you're proposing to take place with this plan? Yes, thank you very much. How could I forget um, another one of the areas? So um, if I come back to the pictures, this is the current state of the Northeast. Um, back in 2021, um, prior to the wooden wall being installed, there was a stand of invasives, which you can actually start seeing coming back as I zoom in here. Um, just for reference, the wetland edge, you know, it's at an elevation lower, um, is approximately at that corner. And then it actually comes around a tree stump. I believe these pallets are sitting on, um, actually touches the garage structure and then shoots over to this tree in the, in the, in the background. Um, so you'll actually notice some of that knotweed is coming back in that area. And then from a earlier photo, this is actually the corner we were just looking at is off the page here. Um, this is actually the knotweed that's actually extending or continuing to make its way towards the area that was previously um, cut and, and um, fixed. So this is almost a year later, um, the same area that used to look like the 22 Woodland across next door. Um, they hand cut, pulled, hand pulled weeds, um, brought in fill, you know, weed barriers, things like that. And today walking around even a month ago with everything exploding, um, there's very few sprouts and things. Uh, they are cognizant. They, they do want to eradicate that, on, especially on their property. Um, so we actually are proposing an invasives removal plan 
Um, but again, this is what they're starting with rather than some surrounding areas. And, and does the invasive removal plan involve any digging or ex excavation of the roots of the, the knotweed or anything like that? So the plan um, that we go for, especially with the knotweed, is a cut, um, let sit for a couple of days, and then the spray application of a, um, I always get them confused, pesticide, herbicide, uh, a chemical to kind of allow the roots um, kill the roots, die, kill them off there. Um, pulling them and stuff, they, they're, they're pretty deep, so they actually provide more um, disturbance pulling them out. All right, does the board have any other questions? And Nick, how about, um, uh, you know, if this, this goes for sequencing on, you know, removal, excavation, or inst installation of the storm tech, is this going to be, it looks like a fair amount of fill was brought in to raise this area up. Is concerned where it's going to go or how long it's going to sit on site? I don't think we'd like to see stockpiles of material sitting in a resource yeah. area. No, it's it's clearly just a removal. It would probably start at the far end and work your way out. Um, there is access directly from the driveway to this area here. Um, so that would, uh, you know, a mini excavator and just a regular dump, small dump, would be able to um, excavate, put right in the dump truck and, and immediately remove from site. Do you have any idea how much the material, how much material have to come out of there or how much is put in? Uh, not to put you on the spot on that. That's that's all right. I can. I'm good with math. I got a whole engineering degree and stuff. <laughs> it's about fifty yards, I think. I mean, yeah. uh, the the wall is just under four feet. If I take a you know assume a, a slope or a triangular shape, nine hundred square feet times a foot and a half divided by twenty seven is fifty. So, you know, it'd probably be. A fair amount of trucks, but nothing, you know, not not a line sitting in the uh, in the street. <laughs> All right. Any other questions from the board? Okay. So we have anybody in the audience that would like to make a statement or uh, ask a question. And actually, I think our only audience member is the uh, the applicant. Uh, would the applicant like to say anything at this time? Uh, no, I, I'm I'm good. Amy, did you have any comments or concerns with the, the planting list that I'm looking at on this? Uh, no, that that all looked good. I don't know if it's practical um, or if the commission's interested in the boulders that are being redistributed across the slope. Maybe be at the, the top of the slope or some signage or something. Um, I'm sure the rounds are going to be good stewards at this point, but the next owner might not be. Mm -hmm. It would be fine with that. Um, so the rounds is, if needed, if the commission feels that's necessary, they'd, they'd be willing to accept it. Um, you know, the, the rounds is for a small air, small property have already engaged kind of a master planner, landscape uh, um, architect for a vision for the whole property. Um, they'll be overseeing and kind of making that, that area pretty dense, uh, not to call out any of the neighbors or anything like that, but uh, there is a ulterior motive to try to provide some screening from the uh, structure to the Eastern uh, property line. So this, this restoration is going to be pretty dense and thick. All right. What is the pleasure of the board, as Jim used to say? <laughs> Do we feel comfortable moving forward and issuing an order of conditions tonight? With the given uh, conditions that we've mentioned? Would anyone like to make a motion? I will if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Amy, you didn't hear from Chase or Carl about this at all, if they had any outstanding concerns. Just, I wish Chase was here today. I didn't hear anything. I was going to say the same thing. So how does the board feel? Uh, do you guys want to move forward with this tonight or wait until the next uh, hearing when we have a full board? Uh, I don't know that it makes sense to draw this out for two more weeks for, for Chase and Carl. Yeah, I mean, I, I've appreciated the time and effort that uh, Nick and the Rounds have put into this and, and working with us to try to get things back um, to the way, the way they were at one point. Obviously not when they own the property, when they purchased the property, so do appreciate the improvement that they're they're looking to make. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. With that said, yeah. um, so I will make a motion that we close the public hearing and issue an order of conditions for 25 Jimper Road, Mass EP number 204-0964, about U17-219. With and the waiver. waiver? Yeah. With the waiver, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, you guys are quick. Boom. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Excellent. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, let me do a roll call vote. Uh, Kyle. Kyle Maxfield, aye. Brian. Brian Crowley, aye. Michael. Michael Livingston, aye. Myself, aye. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't slow your meeting down anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's perfectly fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I so, appreciate it. Uh, this is Henry's. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. Somebody, the rounds just have their hands up, yeah. I believe. Oh, yes. I just want to say thank you very much. Really, oh, no We really appreciate this. Likewise. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for all of your work on this, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. All right. So I do believe that that brings us to the end of our agenda for the evening. We have a lot of uh, matters that are continued to a later date at the end of our agenda, unless anyone else has any new business that they'd like to bring before the board. Nope. All right. With that being said, would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right, roll call vote. Uh, Kyle. Kyle Maxwell, aye. Michael. Michael Livingston, aye. Brian. Brian Crowley, aye. Myself, aye. It's unanimous. We are. That's a record. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Might be. Well, good night. Enjoy it. <laughs>